How would it feel to lose 40 pounds? Even when you're over 40, you are a smart woman. You know you need to move more and eat less, but why don't you do it? Or maybe you think you are doing all the things and still not seeing the results you want. If this is the case, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. This podcast will teach you all about fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, your mindset. Plus, we have some special guests stop by to share their stories. Now on to today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm so happy that you're here today. Today is a beautiful spring day, and I have the windows open. I can hear the birds chirping and the bees buzzing. So hopefully there won't be too much background noise, but it is a beautiful spring morning. So I hope that you're having a wonderful morning as well. Today we're talking about what does it mean to eat normally? So what does it mean to eat normally? Like in quotes, normally. How is it that pizza, burgers, and fries have really become the normal in our society? So I have a funny story, or at least I find it amusing, (laughs) story to share with you. I call it the Pop-Tart incident. My daughter was in second grade and she came home from school one day and she was so upset with me, like really irate. And I was like, what happened at school? What is going on? And she told me that in class they had been talking, the teacher had been talking about Pop-Tarts. And she was so upset because she didn't know what a Pop-Tart was because I never gave them to them, my kids and she had never eaten one she didn't know what they were and you know most of the kids that were in that class knew exactly what a pop tart was part of me felt bad because i know her classmates were ribbing her for not knowing what a pop tart was but there was another part of me that was like yeah score one for me in the nutrition department i did expose them to pop tarts but i decided to go in a more organic and healthier route for pop tarts but And it's not that I, um, I always made it a point with my kids to, now they're teenagers now, but I always made it a point when they were little was to not force them to eat certain foods. Like I think people, when they look at me, they think that my kids always had broccoli on their plates and, you know, always ate vegetables and like the perfect ideal meal. And what I always wanted to leave with my kids is to teach them an understanding of nutrition But I don't want them to be like how I feel like most women are nowadays, especially if you grew up in our generation. Like, we're so obsessed with what should be on that plate. And we beat ourselves up for having things that are quote unquote that are not healthy for us. So I never wanted my kids to grow up and um, like especially I never wanted them to go over somebody's house and see something that we don't have and just go overboard. So we did eventually discover Pop-Tarts in our house. Um, they were definitely not the, they were like an organic version of it. But so think about the foods that you grew up on eating. I know for me, we always had a lot of um, steak. I don't think we had chicken too often, but it seemed in my mind, we always had spaghetti. We always had steak. We did have vegetables. Um, My grandfather was a farmer, so we always had fresh vegetables and fresh fruits. But what was considered normal for your family to eat when you were growing up? And then fast forward and look at what we're eating today. Like, what is normal for your kids to be eating today? What is normal for us to be eating today? How is it that sweets and highly processed foods have really become what is considered normal? I think food has become so ingrained in our society that you just, you can't go anywhere without being surrounded by food. You know, when I grew up, we grew up in a um, very country setting, so there wasn't a lot of places to get food. Now, ironically, my dad um, owned a convenience store, so we had access to cheesesteaks and stuff like that, and pizzas and subs. We were known for our subs if you're in the South Jersey area. And... Uh, ironically enough, I don't really like subs, so maybe that has something to do with making them all those years, but (laughs) so, but nowadays there's 
food everywhere. Like if you want to go get a cup of coffee, there are scones, there are muffins there. It's not just like you go get a cup of coffee. It's like you go get a cup of coffee, you get a muffin, you get a, you know, a, a souped up coffee too. You go to the movies, there's, you have to have popcorn, nacho, soda, you know, and the um, movie theaters now are offering way more than what they used to. Think about birthdays. You know, when you go to a birthday party, it's just assumed that you are going to have some cake. And if you don't have cake, people look at you like you're crazy. Or they think you're on another diet or something like that. Take inventory, too, of how many boxes of cookies, chips, or sweets are in your kitchen cabinet right now. I'm not saying don't eat this food. I'm just saying maybe let's step back a little bit and look and see what exactly we are surrounding ourselves with. If you follow me for any length of time, you know I, I firmly believe that no foods are off limits. But <laughs> there are better quality of foods. So yes, you can absolutely lose weight eating popcorn, nachos, birthday cake, as long as you're under your caloric intake. But you're going to feel horrible. And you're not going to be able to increase your muscle mass as much as you need to. And when I say muscle mass, I don't mean like you're not going to turn into a Tilla Hun, but in order to build some muscle, you need to be supplying your body with some sort of protein, healthy protein, um, and also just to keep your digestive system going, you need to have fiber, which comes from fruits and vegetables. So again, yes, you can eat whatever you want, but you definitely know that there are better quality of foods than chips and cookies and, and sweets. So I know that in my experience, there have been times when I would go out to eat with people and they would give me the weirdest look, like I just might not be hungry or I just don't want to eat whatever. And they will stare at you like you're a crazy person. Like, why are you not like eating everything in front of you? Some of the times I would say I'm just not hungry yet or I don't want dessert or I don't want to drink. I don't want an alcohol drink. I would encourage you to experiment with this concept of going on the, and if you're going with other people, just enjoying the experience you have with the other person or people rather than making food the focus of what you are going out and experiencing. Now, at the time of this recording, we are still in COVID. We are slowly allowed out of the house um, where I live. So I'm sure once the COVID has been lifted and the um, stay at home has been lifted, I am sure that going out and enjoying food and, and experiencing other people is definitely going to be heightened. But once that kind of levels off a little bit, and maybe that's another topic for another podcast as far as, um, you know, because we've been in COVID and because you've been restricting not going out, you know, are you going to boomerang to the other effect or spring off into overeating? Point is, is when you go out and people are giving you weird looks because you're going to say, you know, I just don't want any cake on the birthday. You're going to get people that are going to push back and be like, I'm sure one piece of cake isn't going to kill you. I get that a lot <laughs> whenever I go out, especially family. They're like, why don't you eat this? Why don't you eat that? It's because I don't want to. So watch other people and make sure that you're not letting other people influence what you are choosing for yourself. Obesity rates and diabetes rates are huge in the United States. They're staggering. Each year, 1.5 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes. That's 1.5 million people. Obesity rates have steadily been rising over the past decade, and if nothing changes, there is an estimate that half of American teenagers will be obese by 2030. That's half of American teenagers. That's frightening. That's really, I mean, if you have kids, that's staggering. Do you want that for your kids? Do you want your child, your teenager, to be obese and, and possibly maybe even have diabetes? 
I don't want that for my kids, that's for sure. In 2016, 69% of American women were either overweight or obese. Do you want that for yourself? Take a good look at what you're eating on a daily basis. Is that food getting you closer or further away from your goals? Aim mostly for whole foods, meaning if you can find um, foods that have one, really less than five ingredients is ideal. So when you look at certain foods like an apple, an apple has one ingredient, apple. Read your labels, check out what's in there. You can still eat processed food, but you just have to, you, everything in moderation and you always have a choice. And I feel like I say this a lot, <laughs> but if you are eating when your stomach is not growling, you're eating for emotional reasons. And that's where I come in. That's where I really help clients figure out why you're not succeeding, why you're not getting the results that you want. I can give you the perfect plan, but if you don't follow it or you don't do it, that's the emotional part. That's the food drama or the, the weight loss drama. That's the stuff that we work on when you become a client with me. I hope that was helpful for you and just be aware of, just be aware of your, what's going on in your life. Like why are you gravitating towards chips or why you're overeating or what your thoughts are. Really start diving into that and see what comes up. All right, that's it for me today and I will talk to you next week. Hey, if you're loving this podcast, I want to hear from you. Head over to the Apple Podcasts and scroll all the way down at the bottom of the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Please write a review. I can't wait to see what you write. Once you're done with your review, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and find out how you can get started on losing the weight for the last time. 